Hey there, what's up, Internet? My name is Black Light Attack. I'm up all night to get lucky, and this is episode 3 of Final Fantasy 7. Let's play Final Fantasy 7, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. It's Final Fantasy 7, I'm happy. And uh, last we left off, we were climbing through, I believe, Sector 4? Um, the Sector 4 plate to get to, what is this, the Sector 5 reactor? Something like that, whatever. We're gonna go bomb another reactor, because uh, we hate electricity. And, um, all the fat cats who want to keep the planet down and hurt Mother Nature, man. But, anyway, um, I guess last we left off we also met Tifa. Yeah, that's, so we picked up Tifa. We're gonna go, as you can see, there's actually a very similar layout to the first reactor where we first started the game. Um, and now we actually are running with a full party and all that, which is cool. Uh, we're starting to get some... I think we got a little bit of equipment going on. I think we bought some more armor and whatnot, but um, I don't know why I'm having Cloud attack a different guy. You gotta focus fire, man. You gotta you gotta strategize a little bit, which I'm not doing. Let's see. Tifa needs some levels. They actually, I was actually looking at the wiki, um, just like reading up on some of the characters, and I never realized that like Tifa will always actually start out at a lower level than your other party members, more or less. Unless, like, you super leveled Cloud, unless you, like, sat there and just grinded out, like, ten levels with Cloud, and then... And then Barrett's just, like, super lower than him, then she might be, like, around the same level, or maybe even higher as Barrett. Because, apparently, there's an algorithm in the game that'll take your average party level, and then subtract a few levels from it. So, like, if your average party level is, like, seven, Tifa's always gonna be, I think, five. I think it's, like, average party level minus two. So, like, if Cloud's level eight, Barrett's level six, then Tifa's always gonna be level five, like... I don't know, I think that's kind of interesting. They, it's it's actually scaled off of what your team is currently at, and then um, for some reason they always want to start her off weaker. I don't know why that is. Because she kind of, she, she's actually a fairly good character once you start to get some levels on her and get her stats up, but... Oh, Cloud's freaking out again. What is going on? What is happening? Oh, he's flashing back. Uh-oh. Papa! Not my papa! Sephiroth. And I believe that's the first time we're going to hear that name, Sephiroth. Sephiroth, did he do this to him? I don't know, you tell me. I'll let you guys read this for yourselves. It's very dramatic. Oh man. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell what happened right there because of the old shitty graphics, but um, that was a girl that we just watched. Uh, grabbing a sword and running into a door uh, over the corpse of her dead father. So, and uh, everybody's everybody's worried about Cloud. Uh oh. Forget it. Let's go. Okay. I'll try. I'll try to keep my commentary on the story to a minimal. I, I'll let you guys try to try to let you guys experience it for yourselves. For those of you who haven't played this game before, you know I haven't been doing such a good job of that. <laughs> so far, but I don't know, everybody who's been watching has been giving me good feedback, so um, maybe I should just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm trying not to uh, not to influence the story too much, maybe a little bit, but let's just go ahead and bolt one of these. I think these are relatively weak. That might not, not even be necessary. It's just going to take forever because they all get to take their turns. They do, like, no damage, but there's just, like, 20 of them. Now we're actually getting some magic. Yeah, so, kind of one of the one of the regular themes you see going on with like Final Fantasy 6 and 7 and 8, which are all, um, you know, relatively future-y. 6, 7, and 8. Well, 6 was like steampunk, and then 7 was, was sort of like, sort of a uh, dystopian future, and then 8 was like, 8 was a weird, like, sort of modern day mixed with old school, like, there was a lot of crazy technology, but people still use swords or whatever. Well, I mean, people still use swords in this anyway, but. Uh, anyway, my point is. Uh, where in any Final Fantasy game where there are robots or mechanical enemies, generally they're weak to electric, so you'll see me using electric type uh, moves. Well, thunder type. I keep thinking it's thunder. I keep talking like it's Pokemon, but I keep using the thunder against these these robots. I was using that against the first boss as well because he is also an, a, a robot boss. And spoiler warning coming up, the next boss is also a robot, so thunder, thunder, thunder all day or day. Don't even give a fuck. But this time, we didn't set off any alarms. Things are going too smooth. And I guess we'll go ahead and save it. Actually, it wasn't that long since our last save point, but I guess I guess this uh, game is pretty generous with the save points this early on. I don't really remember. 
So I just bought something sweet as hell, you guys. I'm so jacked about this. I am so excited. Um, so my friend Vin, my best friend, uh, he never had any birthday parties growing up. Uh, I don't know, his parents, I don't think ever were able to afford that sort of expenditure. He wasn't very, his parents, his family wasn't very wealthy growing up, but um, basically he never had any birthday parties as a kid and he just turned 25 and decided, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna throw myself a good old fashioned kitty birthday. And so he rented out an arcade. There's this arcade by us that does parties. And uh, they also like fix up arcade cabinets and sell a whole bunch of like, like posters and um, arcade parts and arcade cabinets if you have the money. The arcade cabinets are killer fucking expensive there because they, they actually ma do maintenance on them. Um, but uh, so we had this big shindig. We had like a bunch of like 20 something year old adults just like in the arcade acting like fools, having a good time, watching old school cartoons in the cake room and you know having, having melted ass. Uh, ice cream cake. It was a fun time anyway, but while I was there, um, I bought a bat, what do they call it, a translite, which is like the, the back artwork of a pinball machine for one of the Super Mario pinball machines. So excited. So like, I, there, there were two big ones I think in the States. There were probably like a billion of them in Japan, but there was the Super Mario Brothers pinball machine and the Super Mario Brothers Mushroom World. And I would have preferred the Super Mario Brothers one, the, the first one. Um, just because it, it kind of looks, it looks a lot like the, um, like the Super Nintendo, uh, Super Mario Brothers, the, uh, Super Mario World. It looks a lot like that. Obviously, the pinball machine is its own game, so it's kind of got its own thing going on, but they're largely inspired by specific games. So, the second one, the Super, uh, I don't I don't even know, Mushroom World might have come first, I have no idea. But Mushroom World seems to be inspired by, like, a combination of Super Mario World and Mario 3, which is pretty cool as well. But, I don't know, I, I guess I just like the simplicity of the first one better, but unfortunately they were they were all out of them. Um, and they were like, they were selling for like 35 bucks or something. It was pretty sweet anyway, but I ended up buying the, the mushroom, uh, the mushroom kingdom or the mushroom world one, whatever. Super jacked about it, I can't wait to find a place on my wall to put this up, but anyway, so this part is actually really annoyingly hard. Final Fantasy VII throws in all these kind of awesome mini games. Um, but this one is just sort of frustrating. You have to come, you have to get the timing down. And it always takes me like a million tries. I mean, there's really no way to do this, but to just kind of get a feel for, there you go. Knew I had it. You have to hit the buttons at the same exact time as Tifa and Barrett. I don't know, this game just throws, as you progress through the story, there are like mini games that you can take part in that are optional and like, you know, you don't have to do them and you're free to do them at your leisure. But like, Final Fantasy VII just, likes to also during the story just throw these mini games at you and I actually think it keeps it really fresh and it's it's something that modern uh, JRPGs don't seem to do all that much and I wish they did but uh, uh oh that's a lot of Shinra soldiers uh, I don't know why Barrett's that surprised about the Shinra soldiers being in the Shinra plant but well I guess if it's, if it's a power plant then soldiers aren't going to be there normally but it's a trap uh oh is that footsteps? Mm, we're gonna hear this theme a lot. Goddamn President Shinra. Uh oh. The president's on! He's on every channel! <laughs> you must be that, what was it? Avalanche, motherfucker! Again, I'm giving you guys a little bit of time to read this on your own. Try not to talk your ears off. Cloud, cloud. You're another Sephiroth. Serves y'all right. Oh, Barrett's got comebacks. I got a dinner. <laughs> Family dinner, GDG. Oh, a playmate, nice. Playboy Bunny? Is she sexy? Is that the Playboy Bunny? Ah, I seem better. Air Buster! 
A techno soldier. I don't know. I don't hear any techno. Actually, there's no music on right now at all. He's a techno soldier. I prefer drums and bass. I don't know. Anyway. Cloud misses him. Come back, baby. I miss you. We got to do something about him. All right. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Go and get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Tifa's like, this is from Soldier? Sorry, I skipped over that pretty quick. Gonna bust him the fuck up. I love Barrett. Anyway, okay, so... If you were paying attention during that conversation, uh, you saw that President Shinra um, said he was able to tell from the glow in Cloud's eyes that he was a um, he was uh, from Soldier. So one one part of being in Soldier is that um, oh, I'll expl explain my strategy in a second. Is that they shower uh, each member of Soldier with tons of Mako energy, which gives them a blue glow to their eyes. And, uh, and increases their, their martial prowess. Damn, that was a lot of fucking damage. So, okay, so this guy, we have him surrounded, and a pincer attack is, is a pretty good thing to have, because when you hit an enemy in the back, it deals double damage. Um, or at least increased damage, but, um, the thing is, is this guy will actually counterattack every time you hit him in the back, but it's actually kind of worth it, because even though I'm going to be taking a lot of damage, I'm also able to just deal a shitload of damage, and he's he's dead already. Plus, when when you take a lot of damage in a single attack like that, it raises your limit meter a lot, so... It ends up being a pretty good thing to just hit him in the back, soak the damage, and you end up killing him in, like, two shots. Because I was able to... The main the main reason that, that, uh, that boss fight took, like, two seconds was because I was able to have Barrett throw a limit break into his back, and it just did, like, 600 damage, or, like, 700 damage this early in the game. But anyway... Let's go, Tifa! <laughs> Fuck Cloud! Uh-oh. Not a goddamn thing. Don't die! Don't die, just... Just please? Can you not die? <laughs> He's like, I know, I want to talk to you too, baby. Hey, you gonna be alright? Be strong, Barrett. Barrett, be strong for Cloud. You worry about yourselves. Sorry about all this. Yeah, Cloud's like about to die, dangling from precarious heights. Barrett's like, yeah, whatever, alright, see ya. Barrett's like very casual about the fact I'm about to fall to my death. Shit! Oh, let's go, I'm gonna grab that booty. Come on! Oh no! No, my balloon animal arms! Oh man, is this the end? Yeah, that's it, game over. I told that, and that's why it's my favorite game ever. What a heart wrench, uh, heart wrenching, gut wrenching, and oh. Oh, we're not done. I can hear you, yeah. Yeah. Back then, you could get by with just skin knees. What do you mean by back then? So confused. What do you mean by that time? What about now? I never actually really understood this conversation. Now that I'm reading it... Oh, it moved! This weird sort of like conversation. I think this is kind of just going in, uh, going on inside Cloud's head. Let's see, who are you? Oh, you know what? I think I know who that is that he's talking to. Hey, it's Flower Girl. That's not who he was talking to. I don't think. I think that that voice, that sort of gray text voice, was in Cloud's head. I think I know who it is. I'm not gonna say though. Hey, it's a church in the Sector 5 slums. Nice. It suddenly fell on top of me. It really gave me a scare. By it, do you mean me? I, I think I think she meant, like, the roof. Not me, but... The roof and the flower bed broke my fall. I don't, I don't think falling that high onto a wooden roof is really all that comforting a fall. Although, I guess if it, if it broke... Anyway... Oh, I'm sorry. I fucked up your flowers. Broke my back. I'm fine, though. Okay, so... This kind of seems a bit unbelievable. Oh, and this is a sacred place. That's how I didn't crush the flowers, because it's a sacred place. That's why... Alright, this all makes sense now. Now, it may seem kind of unbelievable, because Cloud's completely fine, but you kind of have to remember that he's a genetically engineered super soldier, so... <laughs> there's kind of that. Um... So what I was saying earlier about... 
about a uh, soldier being showered by Mako energy. Um, that's the kind of thing that allows it gives them like super strength, super durability. I don't know what everybody else's excuse is. I don't know why Barrett and Tifa are so strong, but Cloud is really strong because he is literally a genetically engineered super soldier. So, anyway, we meet again. Cloud's like, I don't, I have no idea who you are. I'm just gonna cover my face. I'm just gonna face palm. Yeah, I remember you, baby. You were, you were the slum drunk. <laughs> You sold me a flower. Yeah, you better be happy. You're welcome for bla for buying your flowers. For buying your flowers. Do I have any material? You can't have it. It's my materia. Yeah, some. I have no idea what that movement is supposed to be. He's like, shit in your face. Yeah, I got some. Mine is special. It's good for absolutely nothing. Kind of a weird conversation to have with somebody. You don't know how to use it, you dumbass. Nah, she knows. It just doesn't do nothing. You're kind of a weird chick, I gotta say. Uh, hmm. I feel like talking. Do you feel up to it? Yeah, I, I just, I just dropped in just to talk to you. You know what I said? Uh, I just it seemed like a nice fall day in the middle of June. Actually, it's the end of June. I don't mind. Yeah, we can talk. You fucking crazy. Gotta check my flowers, it'll be just a minute. Okay, you go ahead and do that, baby. So it kinda looks like she's wearing this goofy ass, like, pant suit or something, but she's actually supposed to be wearing a dress. Um, it's just the super low poly count, the really limited uh, world models are not really able to display that correctly. <laughs> so, you'll see better once we get into a fight with, uh, with her. On our team, don't worry, I'm not actually going to fight this girl in a pink dress, but... We don't know each other's names, actually. So this this is the infamous, the infamous uh, Aeris, and... There's actually a, a big controversy around her name, in that her, her translated name is actually supposed to be Aerith, with a TH at the end. The thing is, in Japanese, there's no real TH sound, so a lot of times when a Japanese person goes to pronounce the TH, it comes out as, as an S instead, so... Instead of saying like this, you might say sis or something like that. Zis. Um, but, uh, so, you know, it's just a sound that, that doesn't really make, that isn't really made in Japanese. So when it was translated originally, even though it was supposed to be spelled uh, R-I-T-H, it came out as R-I-S uh, just due to that translation issue. I believe that's, that's the problem. I don't speak Japanese, so I don't know if that's for certain, but... So a lot of people get upset and all up in arms when people call her Eris instead of Aerith because it's not her, it's not what her name was intended to be by the creators of the game. Whatever. This is what I grew up with. I will forever know her as Eris. Can't call her anything else. It's got to be Eris. I'm keeping everybody their default names anyway, so I'm not changing that. But she's the flower girl of the Sector 5 slums. And who the fuck is that? Cloud does a little bit of everything, you know. I, I'm a part-time stripper and I do hair. A jack of all organs. He's kind of a jack of all uh, black market organs. Why? What you laughing at? I'll kill you. You see this big ass sword? Hey, hey! What the fuck are you doing here? Don't let what get to me. So speaking of, of the whole Eris uh, translation controversy, uh, there are a few translation issues with this game. Um, don't worry about me. Yeah, maybe I won't. You little bitch. Um, that's one of them. Eris versus Aerith is kind of one of the big ones. Um, I probably have been a bodyguard before. I do do everything and anything. You know what I'm saying? He is right. Get me out of here. Take me home. Take me home tonight. God, Cloud don't do shit for free. How about if I go out with you once? Uh, I wasn't really talking about that. I was talking about money. You don't look like you have any money, though. You're a goddamn slum rat. You're a goddamn street urchin. Um, hmm, it's kind of an odd cutout. Oh, because that's what made it weird. There was a music transition, except there wasn't really a transition of any sort. You don't know me? I know you. See that weird white flash? Hmm, mystery things happening, guys. That uniform. Hey, sis, this one's a little weird. Shut up. Shut your mouth. So this is a guy named Reno. 
Reno hasn't decided if uh, if he wants uh, the soldiers to take me out yet, which obviously wouldn't happen. But Eris doesn't want us to f to fight due to the flowers. Come back, Eris. Cloud's like, yeah, I'm only leaving because she's leaving. I'd fight you any day. Okay, so this character named Reno is obviously a Shinra spy, um, as Cloud just asserted. He's not wrong about that, but we'll see uh, who Reno is later on. He's he's a pretty interesting character, I guess. Mako eyes. Back to work, back to work. These guys are just sitting around chuckling. <laughs> uh, we're evil. <laughs> Don't step on the goddamn flowers. <laughs> And they're all like, you just stepped on him, asshole! I don't know. Kind of a goofy little scene with the soldiers. But here we go, okay. That was quite a leap, Cloud. I gotta hand it to you. Genetically engineered super soldier or not, that was impressive. God damn. Okay, so here we can actually see what Eris is supposed to look like. Um, she... Yeah, there you go. She's a cute little girl. She got her big old boots on. And, uh... Oh, I gotta give her some materia stat, because Eris... One thing about Eris is she is fucking worthless when it comes to physical damage. She's also not very, um, very formidable when it comes to taking damage, so you pretty much want to keep her in the back rank and use her as a magic caster. Even though she doesn't really have, she has like one long range weapon, but you don't really want to use that for very long. Um, so even though, let's see, even though she has like a normal melee weapon, you generally don't want to use uh, her in, the, in anything but the back rank, so. We're gonna go ahead and give her the Titan Bangle, and I don't know if I lose all the materia. It looks okay. It looks like the materia that was equipped to um, what what are their names? Uh, Barrett and Tifa. Hold on, sorry, I'm trying to like read what I'm doing here. Um, were actually uh, put in my inventory, so unequipped from those characters. So we can just equip Cloud and Eris. Uh, sorry, I skipped over that dialogue box. For those of you who are reading along, no idea what's happening. This, this, actually, this scene in general is just really poorly translated. <laughs> They're not gonna let us go. Can't let them catch us. Fuck that. We gotta kill them. Alright, here we go. Come on, just make this giant leap. It's like four body lengths. Just go. Eris is like, yeah, I, I'm I am not gonna do that. Okay, they start shooting. It, it's kind of hard for them to render this, apparently, but they all have guns. And they just killed Eris. R.I.P. They shouldn't have put up a fight, I say. Nah, just kidding, she's fine. Help, Cloud! Okay, um... So you can either just have... Eris fight them, so hold on a minute. Or you can do this. Um, I think it would be... This one? Here's a barrel! Um, no, I don't think it is this one. Nah, fuck that. Is it... This one over in ya? Let's... Yeah, I think it's this one. Check it. Oh, you're dead! Oh, you're fucking moited. Moiterized, you kiddo! So basically, we got split up, and now there's... Here's another example of, like, a just a mini-game they throw at you. Oh, you son of a bitch. Um... Where you have to, uh... Protect Eris with these barrels as she climbs back up to meet up with you, and then... Cloud's also kind of being attacked by monsters on his own, and it sucks because you only have one person. Don't you dance at me, you pork pie asshole. Now, unfortunately, I'm in the back rank because I got back attacked, so this is going to take a little bit longer than a normal fight. But I think I'm about to get a limit break, which is cool. Okay, I'll, I'll explain the limit system real quick. Um, so each character has four levels of limit breaks, and most... Well, okay, except for Kate. So Kate Seth has two, but he's a special case. Um... So, the first three levels for each character um, all have two limit breaks each, so that's a total of six in the first three, and then level four is is their ultimate limit break, and there's only one in there, and it's kind of confusing, but um, we have to wait for Eris anyway. Once I use my first level one limit break enough times, I'll unlock my second level one limit break. Once I use my, uh, once I kill a certain amount of enemies with Cloud, for example, uh, Cloud will then eventually learn his level two limit break. So that that's how that's how it goes. Level two, level ne new levels are earned via killing enemies, while new uh, the second limit break within that level is unlocked by using that limit break. Uh, the first 
limit break a certain amount of times. Uh, I guess it's kind of hard to explain. It's not quite coming out as smoothly as I had hoped, which is also easily translatable into a poop joke. But, oh yeah, you got rocked. Yeah, I know all these barrel spots, but hot. It's kind of weird, but... So, anyway, early game like this, basically, uh, building limit breaks is a good thing because then eventually I'll unlock my next limit break. Um, actually, interestingly, Cloud's next limit break isn't very strong. It's it's slightly weaker than Braver. Here we go. Braver! I don't think there's a boss fight coming up, so I'm not really interested in saving this, but... You know, his, his next limit break, uh, Cross Slash, it isn't as strong, it's still a single target attack, but it has a chance to paralyze an enemy, which is really good. And, um, one of the enemies, one of the bosses coming up soon is actually, I mean, most bosses are gonna be immune to most status effects, but early on that's not true, and there's a boss relatively early in the game, like right before we leave the city, um, that's, uh, actually susceptible to the paralysis, and just using Cross Slash on him makes it so dumb. So easy. There's a lot of strategies for the boss fights in this game that if, if you know what's coming and you can plan ahead, ends up being really easy. Come on, baby. This way. Oh, uh, I guess that's the hole I created. God. Cloud must be fat to create a hole that big. <laughs> and now we're giants. Ha <laughs> ha. They're looking for me again. We killed many people today. So, not at all the first time Eris has been chased by creepy men in uniform. They are the Turks, and not the Young Turks, and not... Oh, hello. F telephone. One second, please. Okay, sorry about that. So, not the Young Turks, not people from Turkey, but... Here we go. Cloud will explain. An organization in Shinra, they scout for possible candidates for soldier. This violently, I thought they were kidnapping someone. That someone being you? I guess? And they're also involved on a lot of really dirty stuff. So, they're... They're sort of uh, the spy uh, intelligence, counterintelligence. Um, they do all the underhanded, dirty shit for Shinra. And Shinra's got a lot of that on their plates. <laughs> but uh, they are after Eris for some reason. And we don't know why. <laughs> Eris is like, I think I have what it, what it takes to be a soldier. And Cloud's like, oh yeah, I don't, I'm an expert on this. I used to be a soldier. I can tell. Maybe you got the stuff. I saw you beat a couple guys with a stick back there. But, anyway. Alright, let's fuck off. Now we're gonna jump on some junk. I really love the pre-rendered uh, pre backgrounds in this game. They're really, really beautiful if you look at them. Especially for the time. And, you know, it's always easy to look at the character models and be like, Ugh, what the hell is this garbage? But, the, uh, the backgrounds are actually really, really nice. And that's what actually a lot of the processing power went towards. Um, I mean, they are pre-rendered, so it's not. it wasn't taking a huge chunk but um actually i don't really know too much about how that works but from what i heard well I, I should say not a lot of processing power but a lot of the memory space on the disc were these pre-rendered backgrounds um so i guess they probably had to cut back on the character models a bit but you do and now cloud's gonna make fun of her i thought you were gonna be in soldier ah, ha, ha, we're sharing a laughing moment were you ever in soldier uh don't want to say and once again, somebody else remarks Cloud's eyes, having a strange glow. Been infused with Mako energy. So once again, Mako is the um, lifeblood of the planet that uh, also... I don't think they've revealed yet, but it's not really a major plot point anyway, so I can tell you guys. Fucking hell, this phone! I'm sorry, I believe somebody is butt-dialing me. <laughs> um, I really need to get rid of this fucking house phone, I swear to God. Anyway, um... So, I have no problem telling you, because it's not really a major plot point, that once Mako energy crystallizes, uh, it becomes materia, which is where we get materia, and for some reason that materia grants human beings uh, magical powers uh, from the planet. And they, they go into a little bit more detail about that, I'm not going to ruin that part, but um, that's, just, that's where materia comes from. But Anyway, finally made it off, looking back and forth. Where you going? Hurry before he comes. Okay, so we're taking Eris home, escorting her, being her bodyguard. Aha, save point. Okay, so we can actually end it right here. There we go. That's episode three, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, we had a good time, didn't we? We've met a new character. We met our fourth playable character, but we got separated from the other two. So, uh, unfortunately, Baron Tifa think I'm dead. We'll meet up with them again later. 
Right now, we gotta do some stuff with Eris. We're gonna have some fun. Actually, next episode may be the infamous cross-dressing scene. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, you will see very soon. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. It really helps me out, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.